All right, are you ready? Oh, it is. I was about to offer to take a picture of both of you. Oh, no, don't, don't, no, don't. Oh, why I'm... not? He's such a cute bummer. I'm taking a video, oh. don't worry. This is another Viva on the street with Pudge, proof of life. She is doing not only well, but she is thriving. Although I'm carrying her because she still walks very slowly. And tonight's Viva on the street rant is about the principle that tyranny requires division in order to justify its existence because it is only through dividing people and then governing the division that tyranny can find a foothold in existence. All right, for those of you who don't know, Quebec is now talking about unveiling a vaccine passport under Supreme Leader Francois Legault's dictatorship, I'm sorry, governance. Uh, even though this new vaccine passport policy has not gone through any legislative process, any democratic process, it is merely yet another dictate from a tyrannical government that has been operating for the last two years without any form of democratic accountability. But setting that aside, setting aside the fact that there is nothing democratic about anything that is going on, not in Quebec and not elsewhere in the world where they are imposing vaccine passports, just think about the consequences of a vaccine passport. Think about the social divide that that is going to cause, exacerbate, bring about. The social division that is not just predictable, not just unfortunate, but utterly inevitable. When the government says, we are going to create two classes of citizens, and it's going to be up to one class of citizens to govern the rights and freedoms of the other class of citizens. You know, when you go into a DMV, when you go into any government-run facility, hospitals, clinics, whatever, there's always signs in the back that say, violence will not be tolerated. Verbal abuse will not be tolerated because you're in a position where you have certain people who are government employees, effectively controlling to some extent the rights and freedoms of the citizens, and it can be frustrating for citizens, and it can be frustrating to the point where there is a certain amount of verbal abuse that arises out of those situations. Well, it's unjustified in those circumstances because at some point you do have bureaucratic institutions that have to govern issuance of licenses and things that can be tedious for the citizens to have to deal with. But now you are effectively privatizing the governance and regulation of one citizen over another by imposing on private enterprises the obligations to verify passport, vaccine passport obligations among their fellow citizens. What's gonna happen? You want to create an obligation in Quebec, incidentally, just to explain what it's going to look like as of September 1st with the test runs that they're going to be trying with gyms, cafes, restaurants. It's going to be an app on a phone that citizens are going to have to basically have downloaded this app to obtain a QR code to confirm that they are fully vaccinated. Setting aside what fully vaccinated means because as of today, fully vaccinated means two shots. But there are some people saying that fully vaccinated in the future is going to be two shots and a booster. And then it's probably gonna be two shots and two boosters. And who knows how the term fully vaccinated is going to evolve. But for now, fully vaccinated means two vaccination shots. And so you are basically uh, requiring citizens in order to have access to private enterprises such as restaurants and cafes and gyms to provide evidence of double vaccination and it's up to fellow citizens to impose this obligation on their own fellow citizens and what possibly can drive a bigger wedge among citizens than imposing the tyrannical police surveillance obligations on one set of citizens over another and Incidentally, uh, you know, in Quebec at the very least, they're talking about this vaccine passport only for non-essential services. But I'm predicting it now and I've predicted it already in the past, so I'll either look very smart or very stupid. If the rationale is that the non-fully vaccinated pose such a mortal existential threat that they need to be kept out of gyms, coffee shops and restaurants, that logic is going to only apply all the more so to essential services like hospitals, daycares, schools, clinics, because if the unvaccinated or the not fully vaccinated pose such an existential threat that they have to be blocked out of non-essential services, it's all the more true for blocking them from essential services. And you're going to get to a society where the unvaccinated are not only excluded from cafes, gyms and restaurants, they're going to be excluded from hospitals, schools and clinics. And you're going to set up clinics, schools, essential services for the vaccinated and essential services for the unvaccinated, quite literally 
a segregated society based on sanitary measures where there are two classes of citizens. And when I say that it causes strife among the citizens, it's not just that it causes strife among the citizens, it's gonna cause strife among families, among members of the same families, because at the very least in Quebec, and I think we're inching towards this unfortunate reality elsewhere, vaccination, the obligations of vaccination are imposed on children as young as 12 years old, 12 to 17. And if they're not fully vaccinated, they are not going to be granted what our Premier Francois Legault refers to as privileges. What I consider to be fundamental rights guaranteed under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, but Francois Legault calls them privileges after having taken our rights away from us. Children as young as 12 to 17 are going to be denied privileges unless they're fully vaccinated. And what's gonna happen there? You're gonna end up with kids in high school who are going to be demonized, relegated, ostracized as either being anti-vaxxers or the children of anti-vaxxers. As if children can possibly understand the rationale for which their own parents who love them more than the government can ever possibly love a kid might have made the decision that they should not get vaccinated or they do not believe that they should get vaccinated. And they're going to be dubbed anti-vaxxers even though their parents may very well be fully doubly vaccinated. It is an atrocious situation that the government is creating for all of us. And, and not just for all of the reasons that I've already mentioned. Coming to a situation, a society, where people who may have valid medical reasons for not getting vaccinated, they might have valid psychological reasons for not getting, uh, for not getting vaccinated. They are either going to be A, deprived services, non-essential services for now, we'll see if it ever gets to essential, or B, they're going to have to reveal their arguably most private information about their medical history as to why they're not vaccinated, or C, even assuming the government can come up with a, a function on the app that allows for them to get the okay with the QR code, but the government knows their most private information. We are coming to a situation where people are going to have to reveal their most private information, religious beliefs, uh, physical, psychological objections to getting a vaccine for this particular virus under these particular circumstances. And that is going to drive a wedge in society. It's gonna drive a wedge in people, the way people get along, the way people view each other, the way people interact with each other. It's going to create rats. It's gonna create snitches. It's going to create scapegoating. When anything bad happens, it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world to blame the people that the government is blaming for this, the unvaccinated, for whatever the reason. For whatever the reason, and whatever the demographics of the unvaccinated, because there are specific um, breaks in the demographics of those who are vaccinated and those who are not. So setting aside the segregation aspect of this, which in North America is by and large going to affect some demographics more than others. The scapegoating is gonna affect demographics more than others. And you know what? Everybody always demonizes scapegoating. There has never been a point in the history of humankind when scapegoating has felt wrong for the people doing the scapegoating. It has always been a function of the government creating these dichotomies, turning citizens against citizens so that one segment of society did not feel guilty or morally wrong for ratting out, for scapegoating another segment of society. And we're heading there. We're heading there faster than I ever thought we could have. And we're heading there whereas I actually never thought we could ever have headed there. Even in the beginning of this outbreak, even in the beginning of this pandemic, when I was sitting around with friends and family talking about where this could go, this was never on the map. And right now, we are past two weeks to flatten the curve, to two months to flatten the curve, to locked into your houses, to curfew, to social distancing, to not having friends and family in your own homes, to compelled mask mandates. Right now, we have gotten into compelled vaccination, if coerced vaccination, if nothing less than that. And now we are getting into vaccine passports in order for citizens within a allegedly free and democratic society to benefit from the services, from the rights and freedoms that go along with living in a free and democratic society. And at some point, we're going to have to say we either live in a free and democratic society or we don't. And we have abandoned our most basic rights and liberties for the sentiment that we can feel safe knowing that there's a QR code to block someone from entering a coffee shop for not being vaccinated setting aside the science, setting aside the statistics, because incidentally, not worth nothing. 
in Quebec, none of these measures have passed through any democratic public debate legislative process. They have been single-handedly, unilaterally imposed by a tyrannical and excessively tyrannical government. And a government that has been getting more and more increasingly tyrannical as time goes on. Because, you know, like Robert Barnes and I always say during our live streams, nothing tests the character of a person more than failure and success, more than failure and power. And right now we are seeing what happens when what I call petit tyrants, petty tyrants, get a feel and get a taste for the power that they have had unchecked for going on two years now. And there is no end, there is no limit to what they will do. Having tasted that power and having grown accustomed to the fact that no one is going to challenge that power and that everything they do under the guise of that power is morally justified. That is the rant for tonight. That is Viva on the Street. Pudge is doing very well, looking very good, losing a little bit of weight. I do not only favor Winston. I love Winston. I love Pudge. I love you. Mwah. And with that said, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe. Notification button is in the, I don't know, whatever. Uh, support buttons are in the pinned comment. Barnes and I do weekly live streams. I'm on Rumble. More important than any of that, though, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Let me see if we can do this. Peace out.